Uh, I think there is more bad news for uh, smartphones, I guess. Uh, I'll be presenting uh, driver checker. It's actually doctor checker and diffuse. These are the two tools that you can use to find bugs in Android kernel drivers. Doctor checker uh, is a static analysis tool and uh, diffuse is a fuzzing tool which are uh, customized uh, to find bugs in Android kernel drivers. So a bit about me, uh, I'm Arvind Mechiri. I'm a fourth year PhD student at University of California, Santa Barbara. I'm part of Shellfish CTF team, which uh, we actually take part in a lot of CTF competitions. We also participate in non-academic hacking competitions like CGC. And most of my research is vulnerability detection in system software like ARM Trust Zone, Android kernel drivers, bootloaders, and low-level firmwares like routers and mod uh, modem stuff. You can find more about my research at my website, which is mechery.github.io. So Android is everywhere. Uh, as you can see, the trend or the market share of Android is ever increasing since 2012. However, uh, the bugs are also increasing. So if you see the trend of Android bugs over past four years, uh, if you see the security bulletin that is released by Google every month, the number of bugs is actually increasing. And if you we'll go a bit deeper and see where exactly these bugs are, 39% of these bugs are in uh, AOSP, which is the Java layer of uh, Android. And 61% of these bugs are in kernel, which is like the low level components, the C code. Uh, if you dig a bit deeper and see where in kernel these bugs are, 15% of these bugs are in the core component of kernel, like uh, networking stack and memory management, whereas the other 85% are in vendor code. Basically, the code written by different vendors, this is usually the driver code. And uh, these bugs are actually of huge value. So in last year, at, at uh, Mobile Phone to Own, Trend Micro awarded 500K for different researchers who were able to exploit different Android phones which were being challenged. And almost in all the exploit chains, there was at least one bug which was in driver where they used this bug to get a complete compromise of the corresponding phone. And the zero DM also pays a lot of money. Uh, the, actually, the, the right hand side shows the money that zero DM pays, and the gray boxes actually show the different bugs and the corresponding payout. Zero DM pays up to 1500K, that's a lot of money for different bugs in Android. Not only zero DM, actually Google also pays a lot of money. So the minimum amount is actually $300 and we get 150K, up to 150K, depending on the severity of the bug. If the bug is critical, you get uh, 150K. So there is a lot of money involved. Ironically, there are a lot of bugs. So now the basic question is, why is it hard to find these bugs? So let's take a step back and see, uh, let's consult our old knowledge. So there is, the vulnerability detection is actually extensive area of research. People have been doing vulnerability detection for the past three decades. And uh, most of the techniques that they use can be categorized into two broad categories, static analysis and dynamic analysis. In static analysis, you just analyze the code without actually running the code. In dynamic analysis, you run the code. So in the first part of the talk, I concentrate on static analysis. Let's see, uh, static analysis, as I mentioned, it just uh, uses perform analysis on the code without actually running it. And kernel drivers are actually open source thanks to GPL. And we can, there are many open source tools out there available which you can just run it on these uh, open source drivers. You can get bugs and hopefully you can get a lot of money. Actually, I did that. I did this. I tested uh, famous open source tools on different uh, vendor kernels. And the warnings that I got were gigantic. Like, except for CPP check, flaw find, uh, rest all the tools, they gave like uh, thousands of warnings. And uh, I tried to go through each of these warnings. It was actually a nightmare to go through them. Yeah, I had a lot of sleepless nights uh, analyzing each of these warnings because they don't give enough information and you don't know why the warning was there in the first place and you don't know what was the, what's, the, what's wrong with the code uh, or what's wrong with the warning or what information the warning was trying to convey. 
So ideally, we want static analysis tool. Actually, static analysis tool is actually quite simple. What we want is we want the tool to track user data and see uh, places where the user data can reach. If user data can reach sensitive places, it should raise a warning. A simple example is uh, mem copy. If user data can reach uh, the, the size of the mem copy, it's, uh, it's a bug because you can easily get uh, buffer overflow uh, using this. However, there are problems uh, in tracking user data. The first problem is uh, pointer analysis. Uh, simple, uh, uh, the slide shows actually a simple code where we read user input, uh, we read an integer into variable IDX, and then we assign the address of IDX to a uh, member, member of the structure, OBJ input var, and then we pass that object to function bar. In function bar, it receives the pointer, and then it uses uh, the input var to dereference into an array. So here, as you can see, there is a obvious array out of bounds access. So to track user data, uh, to, to track pointers, we need to do one thing. We should know which pointer points to which object. If you don't know, then there is no way we can analyze this bar function which accepts pointer, uh, and we should know what object pointer can point to. And the second thing, we should be able to differentiate between different fields of a structure. Uh, so since here, we know that object pointer, input var is the only one that is affected by the user input, but not the safe input. So if we don't differentiate between these two members, we get a lot of warnings, basically a lot of false positives and the tool will be useless. So we should have a way to differentiate between uh, different members of an object. Moreover, real world code is actually complex. Like if you, if you try to apply these techniques to actual real code, uh, you'll mostly end up blowing up the system because real world code has loops, it has typecasting where we cast uh, pointers to and from structures and to and from void star. So real world code is complex. We need to have a way to handle real world code. The second part of uh, tracking user data is stain propagation, which is a technique to follow the flow of user data. Not only pointers, you should also know how user data flows within the program. Here, uh, here this is an example where uh, as in, uh, we read the user input into variable in, and we compute su by adding five to the user input, and then we use SU as an array, uh, index into an array. Here, of course, it's, it's an obvious array out of bounds access. Uh, how, uh, so here, unless we follow the flow of the input data, we cannot reason about SU. We cannot raise the warning. We cannot detect that uh, there is an array out of bounds access uh, in the last statement. Uh, however, there is another complexity here. What about library functions, right? So this is a simple code where we convert the input string into an integer by using A to I, and then we use that integer as an index into an array. Here, it's similar to the previous example. This is an out of bounds access, but uh, unlike, uh, unless we know how to handle library functions, this is very hard. A simple way for this would be like, uh, let's consider any return value of a library function as controlled by user if any of the argument is controlled by user. But this simple strategy doesn't work. Uh, an example is malloc. So here we use user input as an argument to malloc, and we get PTR. PTR, however, is not actually completely controlled by user, because PTR is a pointer, and it depends on the heap layout of the program. So if you use a simple technique, it doesn't work. So we need to, uh, so as I mentioned before, to track user data, we need to, uh, we need to solve two major problems. One, pointer analysis. The second one is stain propagation. And the real world code is complex. However, kernel drivers are actually small. Uh, I did analysis on uh, kernel drivers for four different vendors. The size of the kernel drivers ranges from 31 lines to 240K uh, source code, uh, source lines. But 80% of the drivers are actually less than 7,000 lines of code. This is actually quite small for uh, analysis, for static analysis tools. And if we can separate driver code from actual kernel, 
we can actually do a lot more analysis on just the driver code by ignoring the kernel code. This is the, uh, this is the idea, like this is the basic idea of my entire like, talk. The observation that kernel drivers are actually small. Kernel drivers are actually simple if we can separate kernel uh, driver code from the rest of kernel code. And uh, to handle loops, as I mentioned before, a real code is complex. It has loops and uh, uh, it has loops. So to handle loops, uh, we can use a technique where which is actually dependent on the data flow of the program and uh, Independent of the complexity of the instructions within the loop, we can iterate loop a fixed number of times, which can give a relatively enough precise information. Actually, you can refer the paper for the more details on how we handle loops. But in short, uh, for a given loop, ignoring the complexity of the instructions, we just analyze loops fixed number of times by looking at the structure of the loop. And then to handle kernel functions, uh, we assume that all kernel functions are safe. Actually. If uh, this, the, uh, if we use this, we actually lose a lot of uh, 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 bugs. But this actually helps us being uh, uh, this actually helps us being uh, to be precise. We lose a lot of warnings. However, our results will be a lot more precise. So yeah, uh, it's a story time for uh, for the name Doctor Checker. Actually, while I was writing this tool, it was 3 a.m. in the morning, I created a folder called DR Checker, which in my mind it was driver checker. But when we wanted to write a paper about this, my friend didn't knew that I meant driver checker. So he named the paper Dr. Checker, and people now call it as Dr. Checker. But actually, it means driver checker. Uh, and the overview of driver checker, OK, driver checker is uh, a static analysis tool, as I mentioned before. It takes driver code, it performs traversal of the driver, uh, of just the driver. At each point in the driver, it consults analysis clients, which are points to analysis and taint analysis. They track user data along with pointers. They save this uh, tracking information into a common global state. And this global state will be used by different vulnerability detectors, which detect any usage of user data in sensitive functions. And at the end, you get warnings. So SD traversal, as I mentioned before, uh, it's a traversal technique which for real world code. We start from the entry point of the driver. We follow, we analyze each instruction according to the control flow uh, graph of the, uh, of the driver. And then at each instruction, we track the user data by consulting the analysis clients. And we also use vulnerability detectors in synchrony to find any potential bugs when they occur, not uh, yeah, when they occur like in place. So there are many vulnerability detectors that driver checker uses. These are a few of them. Uh, the first one is tainted pointer dereference. It checks for any pointer dereference which is controlled by user. And tainted integer arithmetic, it checks for any arithmetic where tainted value or user data is uh, involved. This helps us detecting uh, integer overflows. The next one is tainted size. Here we check for any tainted size used in sensitive functions like memcopy. An uninit leak detector we, uh, checks for any uninitialized the stack or heap kernel data leaked to the user space. And the global variable race detector detects uh, any races between global variables. And improper tainted use, det improper tainted data use detector detects if tainted data is used in sensitive functions, most like uh, mostly printf and scanf, to detect uh, 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 format string errors. So this is a bug that we found in a MediaTek ActDead driver. So as you can see, the buff is actually points to the data controlled by user. And uh, yeah, bu buff points to the data controlled by user this driver actually has the bug. So here actually the bug is in the scanf, scanf. Here we use percentage s to read string from the buffer into a variable call status. However, if you see the call status is actually a single character. It's not a string, it's a single character. So the bug is in the single character. We check the return value, but it's too late. The bug has already happened in the scanf. So although 
uh, they do, they kind of try to prevent this, the bug, uh, the overflow happened in the scanf. Uh, driver checker detects this. We reported this to MediaTek and they fixed it. And this is a bug in Samsung sensor hub driver. Here count is controlled by user. Here first they check for count value. If the count is less than two, uh, then they return invalid. Let's assume count equal to two, okay? If count equal to two, we use KZ alloc to allocate buffer of size two. So the valid accesses of buffer are buffer zero and buffer one. So we copy two bytes, which is count, into buffer. And then we pass buffer to SSP sensor hub send command function, where that function receives the buffer and it uses uh, buffer at index two. Here we have off by one error. If you, I mean, I, I removed the lot of code, but if we see the code, actually it uses buff three and buff four. So this is bug in Samsung sensor of driver, and we reported this, and they fixed the bug. Uh, the main intention of uh, driver checker in the first place, as I mentioned before, was like existing tools. They didn't have any information for, of the reason of each warning, like why the warning happened, and what each warning means. So we fixed in driver checker, we have a nice web-based UI which displays each warning in, uh, along with the traces why the warning happened. So it's easy, it'll be easy for analysts to uh, analyze each warning. So uh, driver checker is open source and it's dockerized. We tested it on Qualcomm, MediaTek, Huawei, and Samsung kernels. We found like around close to 150 bugs. There are all the CVs out there. There are more CVs I didn't list because of space. You can refer the GitHub link to find uh, the exact list of CVs. Uh, you can use it and get rich if you can. However, driver checker is not enough though. Why? Because uh, there are some bugs which driver checker cannot find. For example, use after free. If you see the bug trends, use after free is one of the famous class of bugs. You find bugs in Chrome everywhere. So use after free, driver checker cannot find. And also there are bugs which uh, uh, which arise because of improper use of kernel API functions. An example is kmalloc. So here, if count is zero, actually kmalloc will not return null. It returns a special variable called zero pointer. So the check actually passes. However, in the second statement, you get kernel panic. So these things, uh, driver checker cannot find these bugs because we assume that kmalloc is safe. So. This is, these are the limitations of driver checker. So driver checker is not enough. We need better tool. So we need dynamic analysis because use after free and the kernel API function bugs are easy to find if you use dynamic analysis. So we need dynamic analysis tools. Good, okay. What's the well-known dynamic analysis tool? Fuzzing. Let's use fuzzing. So there are hundreds of tools out there. There is AFL, Peach, and AFL is actually pretty good. So there is a lot more research on AFL and improvements on AFL, and AFL has been shown to find bugs in different software like libpng uh, Lip and even Chrome. People are using Chrome. People are using AFL to fuzz Chrome. So AFL is very successful. So let's try to use AFL. Good luck if you want to use AFL on kernel drivers because drivers expect highly structured and constrained input. Basically, the input that uh, you pass to the drivers have to satisfy certain constraints, and there is interdependency between the input variables that you pass. So AFL being a mutation-based fuzzing, it cannot reach deeper parts of the driver code. Uh, so let's see an example of an actual ioctal. It's, it's an ioctal from MediaTek driver. So here, command and param are controlled by user. Here, if you see, if uh, there is a switch on command, if the command value is equal to ISP read register, then we expect param to be a valid user pointer point to ISP reg IO structure. If the command value is equal to ISP reg register, then we expect param to be again reg IO struct. If the command value is ISP hold reg time, then the param is expected to be ISP hold time enum. So there is like interdependency between different variables, different input parameters of these ioctal functions. However, AFL cannot understand this interdependency. So AFL cannot reach deeper parts of the code. 
So this is, uh, this is like uh, the constraints in English. So it's, if you see the command value has to be equal to this, then param should be a valid user pointer point to this. So, so this is like, these constraints make uh, drivers highly hard to fuzz using tools like AFL, which are very successful. But since they don't know these constraints, AFL fails, uh, AFL is not exactly fails, but it takes a long time or it's ineffective to fuzz kernel drivers. And uh, some bugs are hard to trigger. These constraints, we cannot ignore these constraints because uh, there are bugs that happen deep inside kernel. An example, uh, this is a simplified example of an actual bug that we found. So here, if you see, uh, the bug is deep inside the code. Here, the, the actual uh, conditions when this bug can happen is this, which is command value has to be equal to 1337. That's the first case. And then param should be a valid pointer to the structure, which is of size 40. That's the copy from user. And then whatever data we copy, the foo dot type has to be 77. That's the first condition. And then the IDX, that is foo dot IDX, has to be greater than 128 because G table is of 128 size. Only if these conditions are satisfied, then the bug will be triggered. So if you use AFL to generate to trigger this bug, it will be hard. AFL may not be able to find this bug in uh, uh, reasonable time. So an idea uh, based on these observations, we, uh, we develop a tool called Diffuse, which uh, works by extracting this inter interface information from the drivers. Since the drivers are open source, we can extract this relation between different input parameters and the constraints from the driver code. And then if, we, if there is a fuzzing engine which can consume these constraints and generate data within these constraints, then we can be effective in fuzzing. So this is the main idea which we use to create uh, this tool Diffuse. So this is the overview of Diffuse. Uh, it's actually quite complex. It has various sub-components, but uh, an overview of Diffuse, yeah, let me explain the overview of Diffuse. So here, similar to driver checker, it works by just taking the kernel source. Once it takes the kernel source, it identifies the drivers inside the kernel source without any specification by human. And it recovers the interface. Basically, it recovers the command and parameter types. And the dependency between these parameter types, it emits an XML specification, which is used by a structure generation component, which generates different binary blobs that satisfy the constraints. And then these binary blobs will be given to on-device execution component. On-device execution component is a, um, is a small client that runs on, uh, on the phone and which communicates to the analysis host using ADB. And on-device execution component, it takes the binary data, fixes up the pointers, and it actually performs the fuzzing by opening the driver file. And at the end, if it finds any kernel panics, it saves the trace of the kernel panic along with the input that caused the bug. And these traces you can use to do further exploitation or report and get uh, bug bounties. So interface recovery, uh, as I mentioned before, it works on the source. We convert the source into LLVM bitcode file for ease of analysis. Then we use that bitcode file to recover device names. And we identify our actual handlers, which are the entry points into the driver drivers. Then uh, we perform an, a simple static analysis to recover commands and the argument types and their interdependencies. We emit an XML spec which combines these information. So this XML spec is actually the output of interface recovery component. And then structure generation component deals with generating the actual structure data. Let's say the param is expected to be of this structure. Actually this structure although looks simple, it's not simple because uh, it has many members, number one, and few members are actually pointers themselves to structures of different types. Let's see the third member, right? So third member is a data pointer, which, which is a pointer to a structure, uh, which is RT buff info struct, which itself is very complex. And this structure, again, has structures of its own. So structure generation component takes the parent structure as an input, and it generates different blobs that are needed to create a structure, the main structure object. 
it creates different, all the binary blobs, and it gives to the on-device execution component, which again, as I mentioned, runs on the phone. It receives the, uh, it receives the binary blobs. It maps the binary blobs into user space. It fixes up the pointers, and it opens the device, performs the octal. And if it sees a crash, it saves the user input that actually triggered uh, the bug, and it saves the trace into a shared folder that you can use. You can just plug your phone in, run it for like a couple of days, and you can just collect the crashes in a different folder. So we evaluated Diffuse on uh, seven devices, which belong to different vendors. We also fuzzed Pixel. Uh, so, uh, so we found various bugs in different devices. So we also found bugs in Pixel, except for Galaxy S6. I think there was some problem with uh, uh, Samsung. We weren't able to run our Diffuse on Samsung device. But apart from that, we ran. Uh, we were able to run Diffuse on all the devices, and we found various bugs. Even we found bugs in Pixel too. And then uh, we found in total 36 bugs. And the categories of bugs is, was interesting. We found arbitrary read writes. We also found buffer overflows. We found null dereferences. Although these null differences are pretty lame, like you cannot do much, you can only do kernel panic, but it was still interesting to see that uh, null dereference exists in these latest devices. And there were also there were like five uncategorized bugs. Basically, these bugs happened when we tested the driver for like 10 inputs. We have the trace of 10 inputs which triggered the bug, but we weren't able to figure out the exact reason because it happened because of uh, synchronization between different threads of the driver. So we couldn't figure out the reason. We just submitted our bug report along with the input that caused the crash. And all these bugs are acknowledged by different vendors. Same as the driver checker, we got CVs from all the bugs that we reported. I didn't list them because of the space. You can refer the GitHub link to see all the CVs that Diffuse found. Similar to driver checker, Diffuse is also completely automated. Like it works by uh, kernel source. You would download the kernel uh, tar.gz from the vendor repository. You just run diffuse by single command. It will give you the interface specification. You use that interface specification. You connect your phone to it and just run it on your machine and it will just fuzz the phone. And you can collect bugs in a different folder on your machine. And yeah, if anybody is interested, you can use it. And we don't want any money. Just We just want you to use it and get rich. Uh, this is an in-progress work. Uh, we are planning to make, uh, uh, we register this domain driverchecker.io, which is a cloud-based service where you can download uh, any vendors or security researchers can uh, upload their kernel tar.gz and uh, this website or like this cloud service will give you warnings for static analysis and also interface specification, which you can use it. And you, if you have device, you can fuzz using diffuse, or you can just see the uh, warnings statically and then report it and eventually make uh, Android a safer environment. And then, OK, as a souvenir, I mean, this is completely unrelated to the kernel bugs. As I was working on this presentation today morning, I kept the laptop open for four, four four hours or five hours, and then I see a crash in user mode. I consider this as a good thing. This, this is a souvenir of Nullcon, I guess. I'll be working on this crash for the rest of the week, uh, but this is just completely unrelated. And this is a random cat picture. If you don't like the presentation, I hope you like the cat picture. And with this, uh, I would like to thank everyone, and I'm open to questions. Thank you. Questions, anyone? For your static analysis tool, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, most of the static analysis tool uh, detect bugs at the cost of false positives. I mean, this problem should be there in your tool also, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's uh, so we actually we actually optimize that. So as we actually, I actually mentioned the thing here. So, uh, so these actually false positives happen because of loops and API functions. 
So uh, we detected that these were the reasons for the false positives. So we make uh, op like optimizations at the cost of losing bugs. Like, so we actually, driver checker might lose bugs, but it will reduce the false positives. This, these were specific optimizations that we made to reduce false positives. Second question is why it is limited to drivers only? The static analysis tool. Uh, that's uh, again a good question. Because as I mentioned, the pointer analysis and taint propagation, they don't scale well if the code is big. Since the drivers are small, like 7,000 lines of code, which is reasonably small for static analysis, that's why driver checker works well for uh, kernel code. There is no principal limitation. You can still use driver checker on normal code but it may not terminate or it may give a lot of warnings because of the complexity of the code. Whereas for drivers, since they are small and there were some design decisions taken, especially for drivers, this will make it uh, kind of driver specific, but there is no principal limitation. To answer your question, you can still use it, but it may not terminate or it may take a lot of time. I mean, basically, there are many open source tools for static analysis. That's right. The only thing is, is there any study that you did comparing those tools with your tool and uh, in a quantitative way, I mean? Uh, that's exactly what I presented in the first slide, right? I mean, that's like subjective, like mm -hmm. how many bugs you are not finding or um, compared to like very popular tools like FB Infer or something. I mean, many static analysis. Yes, so we tried FB Infer, but FB Infer actually it needs a pre-configured make, like you need to pass the make uh, command. But when we tried on ARM kernels, it didn't work well because Clang has uh, problems compiling ARM v7 code. So since uh, FB Infer works on LLM bit code, uh, it, it, uh, we weren't able to uh, make it run on Android kernels which were ARM v7. So. Uh, yeah, we tried FB infer, but we failed. It's because not the problem of FB infer, maybe problem of Clang. Okay, thank you. Any more? So, how does uh, this, you know, analyzer, static code analyzer, differ from? any off-the-shelf commercial scanners that are available? Uh, like, can you mention like a few? Maybe Lint or co Coverity or something like that. Uh, yeah, so we didn't had uh, our, we didn't had chance to compare against Coverity because Coverity has uh, a specific license requirement. So if you use Coverity to publish your work, you need to get the results verified by Coverity. So, and if Coverity has authority to say no to the publication, so that's one of the reasons why we didn't use Coverity. However, we talked to a few people from Huawei team. Uh, we, they actually use Coverity on the drivers, but uh, we were able to find more bugs in Huawei drivers, although they use Coverity. This actually doesn't prove that our tool is superior to Coverity, but it just implies that uh, driver checker can find bugs which Coverity might have missed since that company used Coverity. And uh, you already said that this works best when the lines of code is like minimal. Yes. Uh, so does it like apply for, you know, Linux drivers in specific, like, you know, uh, all the device drivers that are in Linux, can this be used? Yes, actually we are uh, doing that. Like uh, we are testing this on few of the Linux mainline drivers, as you said, like CD-ROM driver is one thing that we tested. Uh, it works well, but it will not terminate. Uh, so we, uh, there we have to do what is known as a bounded model checking, or uh, basically we should be able to scope drivers into multiple parts. Like let's say if the driver is composed of 100 C files, we can say that, okay, scan only 10 C files at a time so that you vet one part, like you kind of do a batch processing by assuming everything else is safe, let's try to find these bugs in 10 files. And then let's assume everything else is safe and then find bugs in other 10 files. That way you can do this kind of bounded testing by uh, uh, doing like batch processing on different set of C files. Okay, so when you said 10 files, uh, that means uh, you're not uh, hooking it at the compile time and uh, you know, linking and all that, is it? 
Yes, yeah, uh, no, oh, no, uh, that's an interesting question. Driver shaker actually works on bit code. So it uh, actually simplified quite a lot. So what it does is it, uh, it doesn't do linking. It converts each C file into a bit code file using a clang, like .bc file, and it performs linking of the 10 files that you are interested in analyzing. And then it uses LLVM link to create a big file from these 10 bit code files. And then it performs analysis on the linked file. That way, uh, we, we kind of uh, avoid all the uh, source code uh, specific stuff because we work on bit code. That's how we scope our analysis, basically. Thank you. Quite a few questions on static. I want to ask something about the dynamic testing okay. part of it. So when we talk about fuzzing kernels over here, are we, uh, so I'm just curious, have you ever looked at using stuff like address sanitizer or looking for instrumentation or coverage statistics? That's a very good question. We tried it on Pixel. There are existing, I mean, uh, we weren't able to get address sanitizer working on kernels of different uh, devices, but we got it working on Pixel. Uh, Google released a documentation. Uh, we presented the kind of related work in Black Hat Europe where we used address sanitizer on Pixel and we ran diffuse. Yes, you were right, we found more bugs. And uh, how, how much did that affect the speed of fuzzing? It didn't affect speed of fuzzing that much actually. The address sanitizer was good. Uh, we didn't actually notice uh, much difference think actually we didn't evaluate. I mean, to be honest, we didn't evaluate. We didn't evaluate the input or execs per second. So uh, I guess it was fine because we were able to find more bugs within reasonable time. So we actually, the bugs that we found were within two hours. We just tested on each phone for two hours, that's it. So yeah, address sanitizer definitely works, but uh, it may not, we, we, are, we weren't able to compile it on different devices. Uh, also, when we talk about fuzzing kernels, you're, talk, you're probably fuzzing just the data which you're making into the function calls. Yes. So have you ever, I, something also I'm looking at, uh, fuzzing of system calls for uh, on the kernel of a live device? Uh, yes, uh, fuzzing of system calls, there, is, there are actually good tools like Syscaller and Trinity, which are actually way superior than Diffuse. So but they don't work on a live Android device. <laughs> yes, no, Diffuse, uh, sorry, Syscaller actually works, but we need to do some optimizations. Uh, but we were able to get syscaller working on actual syscalls. So that's why we didn't do anything because the, the syscaller is superior to us. We, exactly, so we accepted the defeat and we just concentrated on drivers. Thanks. Okay. Any more questions? I guess that'll be all. Thank you. Thank you. Give a round of applause.